Hi everyone, how are you feeling today? I hope you are in good health. In this session, you will be with me. I am Yo Lai Bo from Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Bandar Baru Sentuh, Kuala Lumpur. Today, we will learn about biodiversity in science form 2. Before we begin the class today, please be ready with your notebook and stationery. Are you ready? Let's get started. Pupils, let's see what are the learning standards that we need to achieve in today's lessons. By the end of today's lessons, you should be able to first differentiate organism using dichotomous keys based on common characteristics and characterize the major taxonomy group. Pupils, what is biodiversity? Yes, you are right. Bio means living things. Biodiversity is the diversity of organism which encompasses microorganisms, animals or plants. Can you name some animals that you know? Yes, for example, tiger birds and fish. They are only a few of the many animals we know. Isn't it that right? Beside animals, living things also include plants. For example, the sunflower plants and the orchid plant. And of course, there are many other plants beside this. Next, we have microorganisms. Microorganisms are also a types of living things. Hmm, can you name a microorganism? Yes, great job! The bacteria and viruses are example of microorganism. They are organism that we cannot see with our naked eye. They are a million types of organism on earth. So, how do we classify and identify these organisms? For today's class, we will learn how to classify organisms. There are two main groups of organisms. The two main groups of organisms are animals and plants. Animals and plants can be classified further into smaller groups based on their common and different characteristics. Let's focus on animals first. Animals can be classified as invertebrates and vertebrates. Example of invertebrates are earthworms. Example of vertebrates are clownfish. Can you identify the differences between these two animals? Yes, you are right. The earthworm is a type of invertebrate, which is an animal without a backbone. Well, the clownfish is a type of vertebrate, which is an animal that has a backbone. Boys and girls, invertebrate is an animal without a backbone. Let's see some examples of invertebrates. From the left, 
a spider, pranaria, crab, snail, and ants. Invertebrates can be further classified into invertebrates without legs and with legs. Can you classify the invertebrate into invertebrate without legs and invertebrate with legs? Let's try it together now. Let's begin with a spider. Great job! The spider is an invertebrate with legs. Now, how about the planaria? Good! Planaria is an invertebrate without legs. The crab is an invertebrate with legs. How about a snail? Good job! The snail is an invertebrate without legs. Lastly, let's classify the N. The N is an invertebrate with legs. Awesome, purpose. You are doing a great job. Invertebrates without legs can be classified into with or without a segmented body. What is meant by a segmented body? A segmented body is the division of an animal's body into several segments. For example, the earthworm has a segmented body. These are segments on an earthworm. Now, let's further classify these three invertebrates without legs. Planaria. Planaria do not have segmented bodies. Secondly, earthworms. Earthworms have segmented bodies. Great job! Now, the last one. Snails. Snails also do not have segmented bodies. Great job, pupils! Now, let's look at the invertebrates with legs. Invertebrates with legs can be classified into invertebrate with three pairs of legs and invertebrate with more than three pairs of legs. Wow! This is a nice butterfly. The butterfly is an invertebrate with three pairs of legs. How about a spider? Good! The spider is an invertebrate with more than three pairs of legs. Next, an ant. The ant has three pairs of legs. What about the prawn? Yes, you are right. The prawn has more than three pairs of legs. Lastly, the horseshoe crab. The horseshoe crab is an invertebrate with more than three pairs of legs. This chart shows the summary of classification of animals. Let's revise again. We will try to classify the dragonfly. Okay? The dragonfly is an... Yes! Awesome! The dragonfly is an invertebrate. Does a dragonfly have legs? Yes, you are right. The dragonfly has legs. How many pairs of legs does the dragonfly have? The dragonfly has three pairs of legs. Awesome, pupils. You are doing 
a super great job. Can we try one more animal? Good. We will try to classify the snail. Snail is a yes, awesome invertebrate. Does a snail have legs? Yes, you are right. Snail does not have legs. Does a snail have a segmented body? Yes, snail does not have a segmented body. Great job, pupils. Do you still remember? We said animals can be divided into invertebrates and yes, you are right, vertebrates. Now we are going to focus on vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals with awesome backbone. Vertebrates can further be classified into five groups. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. What is the characteristic of a fish? First, fish is poikilodermy. Hmm, what is meant by poikilodermy? Poikilodermy is an organism that has a body temperature that changes according to its surrounding temperatures. Next, fish are covered with hard and slimy scales. Fish has fins and a tail. Fish also undergoes external fertilization. Fish breathe using gills and fish lay eggs. This is the egg released by a clownfish. We had learned characteristics of a fish. Now we move on to amphibians. Examples of amphibians include frogs, salamanders, and many more. Amphibians are also poikilodermy. Amphibians live on land and in water. Amphibians are also covered with moist skin. Young amphibians breathe through gills. They breathe using lungs and through moist skin when they are adults. Amphibians produce jelly-like eggs, known as spawn. Lastly, amphibians undergo external fertilization. Next, let's look at the characteristics of reptiles. Examples of reptiles are snakes, crocodiles, turtles, and more. As fish and amphibians, reptiles are also poikilotomic, but they produce eggs with shells, and they breathe through lungs. Reptiles have scales and hard skin. Reptiles are different from fish and amphibians. They undergo internal fertilization. The fourth vertebrate is birds. Birds are homeotomy. It is different from poikilotomy. Homeotomy is an animal with a body temperature that is constant and free from the influence of the surrounding temperature. Another special characteristic of birds, they are covered with feathers to maintain their body temperature. Birds 
breathe through lungs. What is this? Yes, wing. Birds have wings. Besides that, birds also have a pair of scaly feet, as reptiles. All birds undergo internal fertilization and produce eggs with a hard shell. The last vertebrates are mammals. Mammals are homeotomic and covered with fur or hair. Mammals breathe through lungs. Mammals undergo internal fertilization, the same as reptiles and birds. But mammals give birth and nurse their young. Pupils, just now we learned about classification in animals. Now let's learn classification in plants. Plants are classified as non-flowering plants and flowering plants. Non-flowering plants consist of moss, fern, and conifer. What are the common characteristics of each of these groups of plants? Moss are plants that reproduce by producing spores. And moss is a non-vascular plant. This means that moss do not have vascular systems. Fern is the second group of non-flowering plants. Fern reproduce by producing spores as well. But fern are vascular plants. Unlike moss, fern has a vascular system within them to transport water and food throughout the plant. Ferns also have true roots, stems, and leaves. Third groups of non-flowering plants are conifers. Conifers reproduce by bearing cones and like fern, conifers are vascular plants. Flowering plants are plants that produce flowers that become fruits and contain seeds. Each seed has a cotyledon which stores food that is used by the seed to germinate. A seed which has one cotyledon is called monocotyledon. Well, a seed with a pair of cotyledons is called dicotyledon. Let's look at the roots. Monocotyledon plants have fibrous roots. How about the leaf? The monocotyledon plants have leaves with parallel veins. Now, let's have a look at the dicotyledon plant. The type of root for dicotyledon plants are tap root. Well, the leaves of dicotyledon plants are with network-like veins. We have learned about all the characteristics in each of the taxonomy groups for animals and plants. Now, pupils, we are going to differentiate organisms using a dichotomous key based on common characteristics. Before that, we need to know what a dichotomous key is. Dichotomous key is a method used by the biologists to identify 
and classify organisms systematically based on their similarities and differences. The diagram shows an example of a dichotomous key. A dichotomous key consists of a series of couplets. Each of the couplets consists of two statements describing characteristics of a particular organism or groups of organisms. Let's look at the example of a dichotomous key for animals. Now, we will try to classify this animal using the dichotomous key. Couplets number one. Is this animal a poikilotomy or homeotomy? Yes, pupils. This animal is a poikilotomy. This means that it can change their body temperature according to its surrounding temperature. According to the key, we have to go to couplets number two. Does this animal have scaly skin or non-scaly skin? Super! It has a scaly skin. Now, going to couplets number four. Does this animal have fins or do not have fins? Correct! It has fins. The animal shown is a pomfret. Awesome pupils! I am proud of you! Let's try again for another animal. Couplet number one. Is this animal a poikilotomy or homeotomy? Yes, pupils. This animal is homeotomy. According to the key, we have to go to couplets number three. Does this animal have feathers or not? Yes, you are right. It has feathers. The animal shown is a chicken. Congratulations! We have learned about the classifications of animals and plants. Now, it is time to test our understanding. Are you ready? Let's start! The diagram shows a crossword puzzle. We are required to complete the crossword puzzle with the correct answer. Question A. What is the diversity of organisms which encompasses animals, plants, or microorganisms known as? They are 12 letters in this word. We have the letter I as the second and fifth letter in the word. Did you get the answer? Yeah! Super pupils! It is biodiversity. Now, let's go to question B. Amphibians are cold-blooded. What is another name for this? There are 14 letters in this word. I am giving you some help to answer the question. It starts with the letter P. Correct! Poikilotomy. It means they can change their body temperature according to surrounding temperature. Question C. What is the key that is used by biologists to identify and classify organisms systematically? This word has 11 letters and T is the sixth letter in the word. You are awesome! 
this word is dichotomous. Now we will have three more questions to go. Question D. What are animals with backbone known as? Great job, vertebrate. Question E. What do fish breathe through? Wow, you are correct. Fish breathe through their gills. Question F, the last one. It starts with the letter I and is a type of reptile. What is it? You are awesome! It is an iguana. Congratulations! You did a great job today. Well, boys and girls, it looks like we have come to the end of our lesson for today. You are now able to number one, differentiate organisms using a dichotomous key based on common characteristics. Number two, characterize the major taxonomy group. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye.